Greetings, and welcome to my video about building and designing this beast. It has taken well more than a year, partly because of supply chain issues back in the days of COVID, but more because there's a lot riding on it, and I really wanted to get it right. <clears throat> I have learned so much in the process of doing this. As I said in my earlier videos, I've been riding bikes all my life, and I thought I knew quite a bit about them. I'm no bike mechanic, and I'm still not a bike mechanic, but I've learned so much, largely thanks to Michael Hall, who is an expert bike, me bike mechanic, for everything that he's done to help me figure out all the different pieces and parts that have gone into this thing. And there are a lot, more than I expected, um, not counting the duplicates like spokes, but just different parts. 72 decisions had to be made. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Of course, links to all 72, uh, or a list of all 72 with links down below. Okay, what were my criteria? There were several. One, the overall reputation of everything about this bike, each piece and the bike in general once it's together, especially for bike packing. A bike packing bike is a very different bike than a Tour de France road bike. I keep talking about my Athos out in the garage. They are so different and for very good reasons. I wanted this thing to be tough and dependable. I'm gonna be in the middle of nowhere and I don't want it to break down. And if it does break down, I want it to be repairable based on mainly what I can carry with me. I won't be able to quickly get to a bike shop within a few days for much of this trip. That led me to consider early on what material it should be made of, the basic frame, I mean. There are steel frames, there are carbon frames, there are aluminum frames, there are titanium frames. This baby is steel, a steel alloy. Um, carbon just isn't strong enough. Um, a carbon bike would fall apart in the first few days of this trip under, under the weight that's going to be on this thing. A couple days ago, I took it for a ride just 10 miles, and it weighed in at 67 pounds, and that's not yet fully loaded. It's going to be heavy, and I need something that's strong enough to carry that. Aluminum's not dependable enough. Titanium is awesome, but finding exactly the way I want this bike configured in titanium would have been very difficult. Having it custom built would be extraordinarily expensive, and even off-the-shelf titanium is very expensive to start with. I'm not at all disappointed. I don't think it's much of a compromise to have gone with steel in this frame. The next criteria was safety. And I'll be talking about a lot of the different parts up here and how I'm concerned with safety and how this bike is meeting those safety criteria as well as any bike could. These are in order, by the way, of importance, these criteria. Next is comfort. My butt's gonna be sitting up here for 4,000 miles and I want it to be comfortable, and my hands are gonna be on these handlebars, and the basic frame geometry is gonna have a lot to do with how enjoyable this ride is. I discovered pretty early on that having the bike lower than I'm used to and longer than I'm used to will make it a more comfortable ride, and this bike is lower and longer than is my road bike. Uh, I mentioned repairable parts availability. I didn't want to have anything that's so esoteric that when I do get to a bike shop, they're going to have to special order something and keep me stuck in some town for days on end while I wait for the part. So everything on her is pretty readily available at most bike shops. <laughs> I mentioned that it's crazy heavy, and it is. But still, wait. And I'm going to do what I can to get the weight down to as manageable a level as it can be while still making this a very comfortable, enjoyable trip. So this steel frame is a heavy frame, and there's a lot of stuff on here that's quite heavy. So constant trade-offs between things that I need to have, things that I want to have, and the overall weight of the bike. Next in importance was cost. Compared to what a lot of people my age are spending on boats and vacations and all that kind of stuff, this isn't a crazy expensive hobby, and I expect this baby to last me quite a few years. But still, I didn't want to go just crazy on cost. There's a lot of expensive parts on this bike. Finally, least important, but I care a little bit, is appearance. Um, the bags here match the saddle. Everything's either black or brown. That was easy. 
Uh, I didn't go out of my way to make it super attractive. I don't think you can make a truck like this very attractive. Okay, before I get into it, please excuse me as I'm struggling still with some terms. Just last night, I confused a head, headset spacer with a bottom back bracket spacer. What? I know. And um, so I'm still struggling with stuff like that. <clears throat> but I've made or been intimately involved with every decision about all 72 pieces of this bike. I'm very comfortable with them all. I own them all. And I, I'm going to be able to live with them on the ride. Um, so how did I do this? First, about a year and a half ago, I started doing research. As I was researching routes, I started researching bikes. And that was a little bit determined by what was available. There was a real bike shortage about two years ago and was starting to let up by the time I started on this quest. And I narrowed it down to three or four bikes that I thought were good candidates. And I started driving all over Middle Tennessee to see if I could find them anywhere and do a few test rides. And I did a few test rides. Some were immediately ruled out. Some were still in consideration. Then I bought a bike. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, um, first big mistake, probably the only really big mistake. There's been a lot of other things that I've backtracked on, but that was the biggest mistake. I bought a bike, very quickly realized it was not what I needed. Um, it just didn't feel like it was good enough construction. It didn't feel right in so many ways, but I was still happy with the frame. And the bike was this, a Surly Disc Trucker. Disc as in disc brakes, Surly is the brand. Um, but the bike I wasn't happy with. So I took it back, couldn't get my money back, got store credit and bought a frame, the same frame that was on that other bike because I was very happy with this Surly disc trucker frame. Then it came up to, okay, how are we gonna build a bike around that frame? So I'm gonna start with the basics. I mentioned the basic frame is a Surly Disc Trucker. That includes the fork. It came with the frame. That's the thing that comes down and the front wheel goes into. Um, it's a 26 inch frame set, which is fairly small, short. I'm, I'm not very tall and I'm more comfortable with the bike down this low. And that defined the size of the wheels, which I'm gonna to get to a little bit later. Uh, so 70, excuse me, six, 26 inch frame, and, and fork, uh, I had a choice of two colors, a bright green or black, I went with black. Next was the handlebars, and I stuck with Surly. Uh, I really like these handlebars. They weren't the ones that originally came with the bike. These are Surly Disc Trucker handlebars. They rise up a little bit so that when I'm riding it like that, it's a little seating taller in the saddle which I find more comfortable for long periods of time. I'm not very worried about aerodynamics. You'll notice aerodynamics was not one of the criteria that I mentioned at the beginning. So these are Surly Disc Trucker handlebars. <clears throat> Spicky, sticking with the handlebars, uh, the tape is a very cushy, it feels like leather, but it's not, it's a synthetic, made by a company called Brooks, more on them later. And underneath these, uh, this handlebar tape, there is gel padding. It's a surgical kind of gel, which they have cut and shaped to be at the places where you're gonna be leaning on it on a bicycle. And it makes these just so cushy soft while still being firm enough to give you a really good control of the bike. But it's a very comfortable long haul feel on the handlebars. Um, the headset um, for those technical bikes people, it's a Cane Creek uh, headset, more details down below. Spacers are by Platt Bike. Um, miscellaneous shop supplies to put that part of the bike together. Okay, the bottom bracket, believe it or not, the thing that goes between the pedal shafts down here is a really important part of the bike and it's expensive. Uh, it needs to last forever. And that's a place where if there's any additional friction, you're really gonna feel it. So it, this is a really nice, <clears throat> SRAM dub spindle bottom bracket. Um, <laughs> in a previous uh, video, I was mentioning that I'm gonna be able to torque everything down on the road. I see in here 50 Newton meters for torquing that down. 
I won't have a torque wrench capable of that with me on the ride. Anyway, that's the bottom bracket in there. Very low resistance. Uh, the stem. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the racks. This is something that's adding a lot of weight to the bicycle. The rear rack, way back here, is a Salsa Wanderlust. I originally got a Surly rear rack, but it wouldn't work with the exact bag configuration that I'm going to be talking about later. So I had to scrap that, did some research. Um, thanks to the other people that have been a lot of help on this. My local bike shop, Biker's Choice. Thank you, David. Um, they helped me pick out this um, Salsa Wanderlust rack, and it's just awesome. You can put hundreds of pounds of weight on it. I lift the bike up by it all the time. Very, very sturdy. And I replaced the Surly rack with this Salsa rack. But up front, this is a Surly rack. It's just called the Surly front rack. And again, big platform. This can carry a lot of weight and it's got room to strap and attach a lot of stuff on here. For now, I've only got water bottles on it, but I can put all kinds of stuff like this light on this front rack. The seat post. Right when I was going to explain my seat post and how boring is that, this finally came. Thank you, Amazon. And I'm going to do my first ever live unboxing video. I've never done one of these. So this is a Shock Stop Pro Suspension Seat Post, which is supposed to make it more comfortable for me as I'm riding along with my butt in the saddle. So this is what she looks like. We have a bit of instructions. Um, so the seat will go here. This goes down into the frame of the bike. And as I'm riding along, this will compress and absorb some of the shock um, of the road, especially the off road. So I'm sure I can find a couple of videos to show you more about how this works. But this is the seat post. And the saddle. Going to be a lot of contact time between me and this saddle. This company has been making these saddles, gosh, for how many years? I don't know, but I'll say right there, how many years Brooks has been making these saddles. And in fact, this B-17 saddle has been around forever. It's leather. And when you first start riding on this saddle, it hurts your butt. But as you ride on it for a few hundred miles, it really shapes to the con conformation of your pelvis, your butt, and it starts getting more and more comfortable. And now I just love this thing. That 10 mile ride I did last weekend with a lot of weight, I didn't even wear any kind of um, chamois underneath my shorts, and it felt awesome. Brooks B17 saddle, love it. Uh, cages. Water bottles are held by these things called cages. These are carbon graphite, and things stay pretty secure in there. But these up here, not so much. So I've actually added a um, little strap to keep these water bottles in place when I don't need them, when I'm not grabbing them moment by moment. But again, same carbon fiber set, um, cages. These are Think Top Ultralight Full Carbon Fiber Cages. Mirrors, speaking of safety, I want to be able to see what's coming up behind me. I don't know anybody else that uses these handlebar mirrors except me. Most people I know either have a mirror attached to their helmet or their glasses, or they have a big round mirror sitting up here coming off of their handlebars. I've been using these end of handlebar mirrors for at least 10 years now, and I really love them. I've got one on either side so I can see both sides, what's coming up behind me. You have to adjust them just right to be able to get the right view of field of vision. But when you do, it's great. Um, they're hard to get. They come in and out of stock at Amazon. I think the last time I got them from Walmart and they were $10 cheaper than it. Amazon, but I checked last night and they don't have them at Walmart. I think they've only got one color right now at Amazon. So these are Spintech, yep, Sprintech Road Drop Rear View Bike Mirrors. That's interesting. The name is Rear View. Would you have a front view bike mirror? Anyway, um, fenders. I really, really like these fenders. And that was a lot of shopping. These are by a company called Velo Orange. 
And these are their snakeskin fenders. I'm not sure if you can see in the video. Maybe I'll do a short. Well, you can always go to the link. They only came in aluminum for the size that I wanted, aluminum color. So I've spray painted these several times with what I hope is good primer and very good paint that'll last for at least most of this ride. So these snakeskin black fenders to keep crap off me during the ride. I had some trouble with the rear one rattling quite a bit. And so I've added some parts also from Vela Orange. Um, they're called problem solvers. Uh, a little spring here and some other pieces to just stop it from rattling. And now it doesn't at all. Now I'm gonna have to take this bike apart a lot to ship it to Oregon. I think the fenders are gonna to have to come off. I hope I can get them to rattle, not rattle once I put it together back in Oregon. Okay. Uh, here's something I haven't had since I think grade school. Over here, there's a kickstand. Yeah, when I pull up in front of a general store with this, watch then, kind of probably going to be at least 70 pound bike, I don't want to worry about it falling over, having to lean it against something. So I've got a kickstand, which adds quite a bit of weight, but I think it's worth having on a tour like this. I'm going to be stopping a lot to take a picture, to do various things. I don't want to be laying the bike down on the ground all the time in the middle of nowhere, that kind of thing. So I got a kickstand, first time in forever. It's by BV and it's called the BV Adjustable. I also had to get a couple of special mounting plates for it from Surly and they're called kickstand mounting plates. Who'd have thunk? Okay, here's something that involved a lot of decisions. The wheels. There are a lot of parts to a wheel. There's the rim. That's this metal on the inside. There's the tire. There's the spokes. There's a through axle in this case. There's a hub. There are nipples that connect the spokes to the rim. There's tape on the inside of the rim to help it hold the air in. More about that in just a minute. So there's a lot of pieces to a wheel. And that's one thing that I did not put together myself. There's a real art to putting together a wheel, tuning the spokes and all that sort of thing to where it's perfectly round and super strong. And I had that done by somebody in downtown Nashville that does basically nothing but build wheels all day. And she's really, really good at it. So I'm glad I had her do that down at Halcyon Cycles. Um, okay, <laughs> this bike has way more spokes than my Athos does because this bike has to be so strong. These tires, well, first let me note, there's a reflective strip around here that really pops at night when any kind of light hits it at all. A little extra visibility back to that safety thing I was talking about. These are not cheap tires. But they, and from all the research I did, and I did a lot, and I've looked to a lot of podcasts, YouTube posts, that sort of stuff, um, from people that do this kind of riding, Schwalbe Marathon Tires, Marathon Supreme, I think are absolutely the way to go. Now, a lot of people would have gone with fatter tires because I won't be on pavement all the time. Some people would have gone with much skinnier tires because I will be on pavement an awful lot of the time. I think this is a good compromise for the width of the tires and the amount of tread on them for the fact that I'm going to be about half rails to trails and half asphalt concrete with traffic. So the wheels are definitely, the tires rather, are definitely a compromise. And these Schwalbe Marathon Supremes should easily last the whole trip. Now, these are supposed to have inner tubes in them, but Michael and I got to thinking and he got to persuading and he convinced me to try making these regular tires built for having inner tubes in them tubeless, like the tires on my Athos out there. So, okay, we put them on the rims and we pumped them full of the sealant that you use on tubeless tires and added pressure and they went flat. And we added more sealant and more pressure and they went flat and we added more pressure and they went flat again and again and again until finally we had soaked the inside of it so much with sealant that it didn't leak anymore. And now I'll go a week without adding any air at all to these tires. They have been holding up great. I've hit big potholes with them. They've kept the sealant in. So I think I'm going to be able to go on these tires without inner tubes. And the reason you want to do that it weighs slightly less. There's a little bit less rolling resistance. But more importantly, if you hit a cactus thorn 
with a regular tire with an inner tube in it and the inner tube pops, it's going to lose air. You got to stop. You got to take everything apart, patch the inner tube, blow it back up, put everything back together, and you're on your way. With tubeless tires with that sealant that I was just mentioning, if you get a fairly good sized hole in them, that sealant will seal the hole and you're on your way. If you get a bigger hole, you just take one of the things that I showed you in my toolkit, a couple of videos, go and you stick a piece of, it's kind of like rubber in the hole. The sealant seals up around that and you're on your way without taking the whole bike apart. So I'm, I'm a total fan of tubeless tires and I'm really looking forward to driving these, not supposed to be tubeless, Schwalbe Marathon Supremes um, all the way across the country, tubeless. I'll definitely be posting about that. By the way, I ordered this saddle from England because of supply chain. There weren't enough of the B-17s here in the U.S. I had to order these tires all the way from Germany. It took oh, a couple weeks. Now they've got them in stock in, on Amazon. Um, uh, let's see. Surly makes these frames and everything here in the U.S. of A. I guess that's the only countries to talk about so far, but there's more to come. Okay. So the rims are Velocity Cliffhanger, really good, super durable rims. The rim nipples are DT Swiss brass nipples. Inside, there is a band of tape going around to stop air from leaking out around the spokes. And the brand of that tape is Muck Off, M-U-C-O-F-F. -F. The spokes are DT Swiss, double-butted spokes. The through axle is also DT Swiss, uh, details below. The bike came with a axle with a lever on it, which meant you didn't have to get out your wrench to take the axle out and remove the tire. But that lever was getting in my way, so I replaced it with a through axle that doesn't have the lever on it because I don't be planning to take this off much. There's going to be a lot involved if I do. Um, I can do it, but I don't want it. Center lock rotor rings by TRP. Uh, okay, let's go to the rear. <clears throat> same basics of the wheels and all that sort of stuff. But also, um, the rear... Oh, mm, yeah, let's talk about the front hub for just a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. As I mentioned in uh, the video about tech, this front hub is a dynamo. It'll be generating electricity every time it turns. And that will take a little bit of energy away from the bike. So the front wheel won't turn absolutely free. It'll be a little bit weighed down by that generation of electricity. But this sewn hub is very, very low rolling resistance aside from the generation part. So that's why I went with sewn instead of Shimano or one of the other manufacturers of dynamos like that. And the back, I went with a really nice hub by White Industries, details below, um, which should have like no rolling resistance, this thing will spin forever. Really nice hub down in there by White Industries. The sealant that I put in the tires is uh, by a company called Stans, and it's Stans No Tubes Sealant. I do have a couple of inner tubes in here in case things go horribly wrong and I have to stick a tube in here. And I'm using Continental 26 inch, obviously, inner tubes. Uh, the valve stems for blowing air into these things are by ZD Valve. And I think that's it about all that basic stuff, your basic bicycle rolling. Now we're going to.